If you're finding it hard to get into a consistent exercise routine, especially after having some time off, maybe you've been sick or you've been injured or life is just getting really, really busy, I can totally relate. So today I'm gonna to show you how I was able to build up my own routine again, find that spark after the COVID lockdowns in the hopes that it can help inspire you if you found yourself in a bit of an exercise slump. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Aaron. I'm a nutrition and behavior change coach who also loves strength training for the sport of strongman. Just just like many people, my training routine was pretty rattled over the last two years with everything to do with COVID. Much of 2020 and 2021 just felt like on and off training. I felt like I'd make some great progress at the gym when it was open, and I felt like I was beginning to get that momentum back and get my routine together. Then there was yet another lockdown, and I'd have to go back to training in my apartment with my bands and dumbbells and modified training once again. This constant back and forth eventually started taking its toll, something I'd never really anticipated before. While I still was able to exercise and I was able to do a few workouts here and there with things that I had available, I felt it sort of interrupted my mentality more so. Many of my clients also found that they were getting really stuck trying to get started again, or even just trying to get any sense of regularity to their program because everything was changing so fast. I often started feeling unmotivated to train because it all felt a little bit hopeless. I stopped enjoying my training since I wasn't progressing, and in fact, it actually felt like I was going backwards. So. I stopped wanting to train at all. I found myself to wanting to do less and less. And as a coach myself, I kind of felt like a fraud because I was meant to be the example for my clients and for everyone else, but it sure didn't feel like that. So with time and a few reality check conversations with Eloise, I was soon able to turn things around for myself. It obviously didn't happen overnight, and a lot of this came down to me changing the perspectives and expectations I had on myself. I also shared these processes with my clients who were also struggling to get back into the swing of things, to find that spark again and to get a routine happening once again. A lot of how I was feeling at the time really had a lot to do with my perception of where I should be versus where I actually was at that time. If you're in a similar situation, there's a good chance that by changing your perceptions, your expectations, and your mindset in general, you'll be able to turn things around for yourself. At least that's my hope for you anyway. So maybe life's just been really extra busy lately and you're trying to get back into an exercise routine. Maybe you've been out with an injury or you've been sick. I recently had COVID, so I know how that all feels. Or maybe you're just struggling with getting any sort of consistency with an exercise routine for whatever reason. These tips I'm about to share with you will help you get back into a consistent exercise routine that's, that really feels good for you and in a way that works with you, no matter what your situation's like. So number one, get honest with yourself. From the get-go, I had to take a real honest look at my situation and ask myself a few questions. If you're trying to start a new routine, I encourage you to do the same thing and even write down your answers in a journal. That's what I did and it was really helpful for me. And you also wanna try and answer the questions from the perspective of someone else. That way you're taking your own judgments out of the equation and you're just left with the facts. So the first question, is my situation really as bad as it seems? For me at the time, no it wasn't. There was still plenty of things I could be doing that could be really helpful, such as using bodyweight training, using dumbbells, bands, and even doing rides on our Peloton bike. Often we conjure up this story in our heads about why things are so difficult for us. Sometimes we can control those things, other times we can't. But what we really have to do is come back to reality and focus on what are the things that I can control and how can I make use of what I have available and make the best use of the situation. Question number two, where am I at right now in terms of my own fitness and strength levels? At the time, I didn't have the same level of strength or the same level of general fitness as I once did. I would often feel out of breath doing things that usually were pretty easy for me. Being really honest with yourself is crucial at this point because it's doing you no good just over overestimating your abilities and comparing yourself to where you used to be. And this is a really good question to keep the answers to because you can often come back to it in a future time and look at the progress that you've gone from point A to point B. And you can then use that as a bit of extra motivation to keep you going once you've got that routine started. Number three, is it realistic for me to jump back into my old routine right now? For me, no, it wasn't. I had to take a step back and really admit to myself, hey, look, I'm not at the same position that I once 
once was. I don't have the same strength levels or the same fitness levels and that's okay. It also meant that I was gonna have to start smaller than I would have liked to and that was something that I had to come to terms with. A really common thing I saw so many people doing and I made this same mistake too was once we'd come out of a lockdown, we would try and go straight back into our old routine and just hoped for the best. The only problem is they would end up feeling really exhausted because their body just wasn't used to that kind of training that they once did before. And they'd also feel mentally burnt out because of trying and failing and trying and failing and constantly feeling this mental burnout that it's just not working. So for me, I had to change my mindset. I had to stop focusing on the things that I didn't have where they would be my strength levels and my fitness levels and start to really focus on what I did have. For example, one of the things that I then started to focus on was I'd built up a really good walking habit, something that I'd just brushed off previously and forgotten all about. These small things are not meaningless. Even if it was just 10 minutes, they form a really good base for you to then build on and keep that consistency going. So the next thing I had to do was remove my previous expectations rather than expecting myself to be at the same level that I once was before. As I mentioned earlier, I saw so many people making the same mistakes. And a lot of the times it comes down to our own expectations of where we feel like we should be at rather than where we are currently. This was definitely the case for me. If you don't check your expectations often, it's really easy to get caught up feeling really frustrated and feeling like you're failing. You're then gonna start to naturally have to lean on things like motivation, watching motivational videos, and trying to get inspired more often, which is really not a long-term strategy. It's not going to be successful in the long run. So one of the things that I personally did was remove the pressure I put on myself to prepare for a competition, which is typically against what most people would suggest doing. So in the past, what I would do is pick a competition and start training for that as a way to get back into it, get some motivation. The only problem was that I was never only just a few weeks out from a competition. It was gonna take a bit longer, so I needed to give myself that time to actually build up a bit of a base and then get ready for the competition. Many of the comps that I actually do are often released about eight weeks before they're actually set to happen and at the time eight weeks was clearly not long enough for me to build up that base I'd lost that base level of strength so it was gonna take a bit longer and so normally when things are going great this isn't an issue I can just spend that eight weeks get ready for the competition and then do it but since I hadn't been training consistently I'd lost that strength base and therefore I was needing more time to actually build up. So I decided not to register for any comps or sign up for any comps until I felt ready to compete. The other thing to note here is that you wanna give yourself a chance to actually start to enjoy it and not try to force yourself into change really quickly, which is often the thing that happens when we force ourselves to get ready for a competition or a race or an event or something like that. By doing it this way, you'll have a lot more success with it. And then by the time you actually go to do that event or the race, you're going to enjoy it that much more. So I put my focus into making my training really enjoyable and making it fun so that I looked forward to going to the gym and actually doing those workouts. This made it much easier to stay consistent in the beginning because I looked forward to the sessions that I was about to do. The next one's kind of a little obvious, but it's to start slowly and build up over time. Once you've removed a lot of those expectations, you'll have a lot more mental space available to go at your exercise at your own pace. However, even though we've got a lot more mental space available, we still wanna start out smaller as that's always a good idea. There's essentially two ways that you can build up slowly. Both are important to consider. The first is frequency. So this is the number of times that you do exercise in any given week. Most people try to go from zero to every day straight away. This is a huge mistake, especially if you're planning on incorporating resistance exercise like I was. I'd suggest you start with two to three sessions per week. That way you give yourself plenty of rest in between your workouts. So if you do pull up sore, you're also gonna reduce the chance of injuries early on. The next one is intensity. Intensity can often refer to the actual weight that you're using. But for this video, what I'm talking about is the perceived intensity, how hard the workout is for you personally, how hard you're having to push yourself. You don't need to go into the gym all guns blazing. All that does is just leave you feeling exhausted and it makes it harder for your body to recover from that. Instead, what I suggest is just go at about 50 to 60% of what you typically do. You need to treat yourself like you're starting from scratch and go in with a beginner mindset with the intention of starting slower than you think you need and building it up over time. If you're using weights, 
Start with about 50% of the weight that you used to use. This is what I did when I was building up my own routine. It seems really easy, but that's the point. It's meant to be easy in the beginning. So one of the things that you might notice anytime you do any really intense exercise is a delayed effect of feeling tired for the next day or so. This is normal and this is your nervous system, which is recovering after the exercise. The harder the exercise is for you, the more your nervous system is going to have to recover from that. It can even show up with things like your concentration, your ability to focus, and even handling stressful situations. Think of your nervous system like the batteries that power you to move all the muscles, as well as have your brain function properly and the rest of your body to function at 100%. They need to be recharged in between sessions, otherwise they just run flat kind of like a battery does. And when that happens, you can't really function properly anyway, and all that does is make it harder for you to stay consistent because it's physically draining you of energy. And so in the beginning, when you're getting back into exercise, those batteries don't really have much of a capacity to keep supplying you with energy. They need to be recharged more often. That's why it's so important to pull back the intensity a little bit and work within your means. This is gonna ensure that other areas of your life aren't really affected, like your ability to focus or concentrate at work, those sorts of things. Focus on one or two goals. This involves removing a lot of the fluff and only focusing on one or two things at a time. It's really easy to jump in and go, I wanna get stronger on all of the lifts, I wanna get leaner, I wanna build muscle, I wanna get fitter, I wanna compete in an event. But having so many goals all at once, especially when you're trying to get back into things, is a recipe for disaster. For me, I only focused on increasing my overhead press and farmer's walks. Everything else was a bonus and it was secondary to those two things. One of the traps I used to fall into all the time if I had a situation like this was trying to add more and more stuff to my program and every time I'd go into train, if I didn't get it all done, I'd then feel like it was a waste of time, which is obviously not true. So I just decided this time around to focus on one or two things and call that a win. And that's okay when you're starting out. So I'd suggest really only one to two things in the beginning. You can always add more as you get going and you get more consistent with it. For example, you might want to increase your 5K time, you want to, you might want to improve your mobility and flexibility, or just general fitness overall. Just pick one thing and start with that. Simple is best here and it gives you something granular for you to focus on. Something that's important to you, not just something that other people have told you that you might wanna do. As you get going and you've built up the consistency and your routine is really solid, then you can start to broaden the scope a little bit and try to go after multiple goals at once. And the last one is remove the noise. So one of the things that really started to derail me mentally when I was getting back into this was constantly comparing myself to others on social media that I was following who were able to keep training throughout this time. All this really does is it starts to shift your focus onto the things that you can't do, such as lifting a certain weight. And this is certainly not what you want when you're starting to build up an exercise routine again. This then starts to play into your self-belief, your motivation, it makes it harder for you to stick to in those beginning stages. So by removing those distractions, in my case it was not going on Instagram as much, I was able to keep focused on what I was doing and not falling into a trap of comparisonitis and feeling like crap. I'd encourage you to, if you know that this affects you, to do the same thing. You can either unfollow or just mute some accounts that maybe you start to compare yourself to them and it's really gonna help you out and stay focused and motivated as you start building up your own exercise routine. So this also doesn't have to be a forever thing. You know, it can be just in the beginning stages and then you might start following them back. A really easy way to tell if you are a little bit confused is have a think about how do I feel after I view this person's content? Do I feel inspired to go and start doing some exercise or do I actually start then jumping into comparing myself to them? If you start feeling like crap after it, that's a good chance that you're falling into that trap. The mental aspect here was something that I'd never really considered, but it made a huge, huge difference when I was getting back into things. So that's it for this video. I hope that these tips were really helpful for you, and I hope that my story gave you some inspiration as well. If you did like this video, make sure you do me a favor and like the video, as well as subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with content just like this. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.